Seen here, the Northrop M2F2, a prototype that would eventually serve as a model for the space shuttle, flies gracefully through a clear sky. Everything goes wrong, however, as it attempts to land, and the voice of a man in ground control decisively calls out, quote, Get the fire truck out! The crash came at the end of a glide test for the heavyweight lifting body spacecraft, designed and intended for astronauts to fly back from space. The M2F2. Even though NASA was in the middle of trying to put a man on the moon, the organization believed it needed to continue building and testing a variety of craft, including ones that could routinely return from space piloted by an astronaut. Beginning in 1963, the Dryden Flight Research Center at the Edwards Air Force Base was taken over by engineers focusing on creating a wingless spacecraft that could produce lift from its body. The undertaking was almost cancelled when, in 1967, one of those lifting body spacecraft crashed and rolled during landing. NASA was inspired to build the heavyweight lifting bodies after successful testing of the M2F-1, a lightweight, unpowered prototype that tested the concept of a lifting body. That first model became known as the Flying Bathtub because of its unique shape. The two resulting spacecraft that were designed were the M2F2 and the HL-10, both based on studies from the Ames and Langley Research Facilities and built by the Northrop Corporation. Both would have their first test flights carried out in 1966. The M and F in the craft's name stood for manned and flight respectively. While its body was 22 feet long, its wingspan was only a little over 9 feet wide. The engine used was the very first liquid propellant rocket engine used by the United States on an aerial vehicle. As propellant, it used ethyl alcohol and liquid oxygen, generating a peak thrust of 6,000 pounds of force. The first captive test flight, carried aloft by an adapted B-52, was conducted on March 23rd of 1966. The first free test flight of an unpowered F-2, which was still very similar to the early F-1 model, was carried out on July 12, 1966, with pilot Milton O. Thompson at the helm. At an altitude of 45,000 feet, or 13,700 meters, Thompson was dropped inside the F-2 from the wing pylon mount of the adapted B-52. In the coming seconds, he would reach a gliding speed of 450 miles per hour, or 720 kilometers per hour, and successfully land the craft. The M2F2 was flown 16 times on these test glide flights, five of those times by the original pilot Milton O. Thompson, and three by Bruce Peterson, whose last flight on an F2 ended in disaster. The Crash Bruce A. Peterson sat inside the heavyweight lift body craft, preparing for the B-52 to drop him over the desert of Edwards on May 10, 1967. He was as much of a veteran as one could be at flying the new type of vehicle, as he had flown the F-1 and the HL-10 already, and had been trained at both the Naval Aviation School and the Air Force Test Pilot School. Outside, the sun was shining, and the sky was clear. While this was only a glide test flight, it was in the schedule to actually start using the XLR-11 rocket engine on the next set of flights. The craft was dropped at the desired altitude, and Peterson began guiding it gracefully to its steep descent into Edwards Base. But as he approached the lake bed runway, the F-2 began suffering from oscillations induced by his attempts at controlling the craft. At the root of the issue were the wings of the M2F2, which produced significantly less roll authority than most other aircraft, resulting in less force available for him to control it while in roll. He tried responding through roll maneuvers that were less successful than he hoped, leading to the pilot-induced oscillation in the roll axis. The craft increasingly rolled from side to side while still in flight as he tried to rein it in. Thanks to his expertise, though, he was still able to bring things under control before running into another unexpected issue. As NASA official Yvon Gibbs explained, quote, Peterson recovered, but then observed a rescue helicopter that seemed to pose a collision threat. 
He was immediately distracted, sending a radioed request to get the helicopter moved, but there was too little time. He was forced to drift in a crosswind towards an unmarked area of the lake bed runway, where he could not properly assess the height of the ground due to a lack of markers. In an attempt to provide extra lift, he fired the landing rockets, but the craft hit the runway before the landing gear was down and locked. From there, the F-2 rolled six times with its pilot inside until it stopped upside down. The footage of the accident was highly distributed as part of the 1973 TV series, The Six Million Dollar Man. Assessing the damage and the cause of the accident, NASA was able to determine that the craft had lateral control problems despite its stability augmentation control system. An updated M2F2 was built at Dryden from the salvageable parts of this accidented prototype and was designated M2F3. A third vertical fin in between the tip fins was added to overcome the control issues. These first tests by NASA using heavyweight lifting bodies answered scientific questions about the technology, paving the way for NASA's Dream Chaser, scheduled to resupply the International Space Station in 2021. Bruce Peterson The 1967 crash severely damaged Northrop's F-2. Peterson was unable to eject and was also injured. He was pulled out of the vehicle by co-workers Jay King and Joseph Huxman to then be rushed to the hospital at the base. Due to the severity of his injuries, he was moved to the March Air Force Base Hospital and then to the University of California Los Angeles Hospital. After an excessive stay, Peterson lost all vision in his right eye, but otherwise recovered. Wearing an eye patch, Peterson continued to work on support missions, on research flights, and continued his flying duties with the Marine Reserve up until 1971. By his retirement, Peterson had flown almost 70 different vehicles and logged in more than 6,000 flight hours. He stated that he did not approve of his crash being televised and so frequently shown as if it were the most notable thing he had done. 